this afternoon we have the pleasure of talking to uh, Len Kravitz. So, Len, welcome. Thank Great you. to be here with you, Dr. Berman. Thank you. And I just wanted to start out to ask if you would perhaps give us a little of your background, your early life, your education, your training, uh, the, that type of thing. It's a great story for me because I received my bachelor's degree in health and recreation. And as I was proceeding into the job market, I got a job at a private school in uh, Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. It was called the Strawberry Patch School, and it was elementary. And, you know, I've always loved working with children in gymnastics. Mm -hmm. At the Strawberry Patch School, my, my career direction at the time was health and recreation, you know, not necessarily physical education, although I took those classes. Mm -hmm. But I absolutely loved teaching physical activity. We did all types of skills. It was really lifetime activity skills with the students. Mm -hmm. And it was such a wonderful experience for me that it really inspired and motivated me to get my master's. Mm -hmm. And now, I went straight my master's. Where did you do your undergrad degree? The undergrad was at the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque. Okay, all right. Now, are you from the Southwest? I or? am from the Southwest. <laughs> I, I live the Southwest. Okay. I dress the Southwest. Okay. And I actually now live in the Southwest, too, so I've gone Perfect. full circle. Perfect. Yeah. So you, you finished your bachelor's at University of New Mexico, teaching, then decide, okay, master's degree. And I went to San Jose, California, because I still had kept my, my roots in gymnastics, which I have done all my life. Okay, so tell, now wait a minute, you're skipping all this yes. important stuff. Yeah. Now, did you do competitive gymnastics in college? I sure did. I competed at a national level. My team, the University of New Mexico, was a WAC champion. Uh, my... my area of gymnastics, I was all around. I was best on the pillow bars and high bar. Oh, wow. But the peak of my career was, uh, I'm a Jewish, Jewish athlete, and so I was selected to be on the Maccabea Games, oh, I know which about is that. the Jewish yeah, Olympics. Yeah. And yeah. 1973, I went to Israel for two weeks, competed, won a gold, silver, and bronze medal in wow. the wow. Maccabea Games. See, you would have forgotten this. Absolutely. Don't, no, don't skip any of this Did, good stuff. Didn't even think so about it. Well, so, but, but you, again, like a lot of people I've talked to, you were an athlete and sort of got into physical activity that way. Absolutely. And, and enjoyed it, obviously. My, my gymnastics really made me go towards, I, I really felt the health and recreation was best for me at that time because I wanted to own my own gymnastics school. Mm -hmm. And I felt mm -hmm. I would get a real mm -hmm. broad-based education. But it was total athletics that, that drove me into yeah. this field. Uh, okay. D now, did they have scholarships there? Did you have a scholarship? Well, I had a full scholarship. Yeah, I sure did. Fantastic. Yeah. It was a wonderful college experience, having camaraderie of a team, yeah. incredible a a coach who taught me discipline discipline, focus, how you must challenge yourself. My coach taught me when I was, you know, an undergrad, what I use today and try to instill in my students today, yeah. that always try to be your best, you mm -hmm. know, do not, you know, take a second step and, and, you know, try to sidestep your way out of something, you know, face your challenges head on. Wonderful, wonderful, inspirational coach. And to this okay. day, I, I, I thank him. Great. Great. Okay. So now we're at the master's degree. Yeah. Good. At San Jose. San Jose. Okay, and what did you, did you specialize in something or what? I, you're really right. I, I went to San Jose. They had a TA open for me, so I coached the women's gymnastics team with a head coach. And I just really wanted to learn as much as I could about the body, so I went to the generalist program. Mm -hmm. And what was neat, I had great, great mentors. I had great, some of the peer, premier Professors in our field right now, Dr. Glenn Gazer mm -hmm. was one of my professors, right, yeah, and okay. he's outstanding. I chose to do a flexibility study, Jack, that was amazing. You needed 60 subjects for a flexibility study to, you know, get a good sample mm -hmm. in. And so I told my chair I could teach aerobics, which I never taught before in my life, mm -hmm. because the aerobic classes had all the big, big numbers. And my chair, surprising to me, said, okay, you're going to teach aerobics to do this flexibility study, and I'm going to assign you the class. And he assigned it to me in spring, and I had all summer to learn how to teach aerobics. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what happened is when I was doing my master's, I loved teaching aerobics. And it was like a transition from teaching gymnastics mm -hmm. to teaching fitness. Mm -hmm. 
and, and it was wonderful. And this is really what got me into the, the field of personal training okay. and fitness that, w that we are now. Yeah. And I completed my study. It was a flexibility study. I published it. Glenn Gazer he helped tremendously on it, you know, as did you know, several other colleagues. Mm -hmm. that, that I say colleagues now, but they were professors at, at that the time. time. Yeah. And then, so then what? You left. What, and I got this incredible job at the Los Gatos Athletic Club as their director of fitness. Oh, wow. J after you had just finished your master's. Yeah. And, and here's, he told me, you know, he applied, you know, he, he auditioned or, or interviewed many people. A and this was a real serious resistance training owner. And one of the interview questions was, tell me how you train people. And I immediately started telling him about, I use periodized training design. Mm -hmm. And I explained to him how periodization works and how it can be individualized for all fitness levels. Mm -hmm. And he said he was so impressed with you know, my background in periodized training, he said, I knew you had to be the person we were going to hire. So and I, this is where at the Los, Los Angeles? Gattis, Los oh, Gattis. Los Gattis, OK. Los Gattis Athletic Club. Okay. Very beautiful area in Los Gattis. Very beautiful city. I, I, I was truly blessed because mm -hmm. It was one of the best jobs someone could have coming out of their masters. Oh yeah. yeah. And it was a beautiful club, wonderful people, and oh gosh, you know, I must have taught there for over a decade. What? What? Uh, I forgot to ask you, sort of some timelines. So, what? When were you doing your masters, and when were you, your bachelors, and when were you doing your masters? It's what? easy for me because I, I had ten years between each. Oh, ten okay. years between the bachelors and the masters. Ten years between the masters and the PhD. So okay. I had decade of, of experience. I like to say learning about the profession. So and about when? People. So what decade did you start your bachelors? The bachelors were taking me back to the 70s. Well, yeah, I go, I go back there too. So. <laughs> masters, the 80s, okay. PhD, the 90s. Okay, and then so you stayed at the athletic club for 10 years? 10 years, and towards the last few years, I started teaching part time at San Jose State. And then they wanted me more, and I had a few years where I taught full time. Mostly, you know, 100 level classes, aerobics, mm -hmm. activity level mm -hmm. classes, body condition. They also let me, because I, I really love stress management, so I also taught stress management as well. Mm -hmm. But teaching in that college environment at San Jose State actually inspired me. I said, oh gosh, I want to teach, you know, at a college level like Jack Berryman. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you and I both know, Jack, you can't teach with a master's. Right. I mean, very right. few people. At least people, not at that level. It doesn't happen. Yeah. And so, you know, my colleagues there said, Len, go get the PhD. You're just more than capable. And so I started doing search. And I knew I wanted to do something wellness, health promotion, exercise mm -hmm. science. Mm -hmm. And um, I chose UNM because they had, at that time, in the 1990s, they had a dual program for the PhD, exercise science and health promotion. Great, because I wanted both. That is. wanted yeah. both, That's yeah. That's too, too good. Things here. very very good. They no longer have it, which you know I wish they did. But you know yeah. they lost professors as as change occurs. Yeah. But it's a great profession, and so I got my PhD, both double major, exercise science and health. Okay, medicine. and then you stayed on there. They hired no. No, Ole Miss took me right away. Oh, you went. Oh, okay. <coughs> Ole Miss. Oh, what a great school. Ole Miss is wonderful because they just are so faculty focused. Mm -hmm. When they came in, they just treated Len Kravitz. You are the professor we have always wanted. And, and I know, you know, they have, you know, a thousand other professors, but they made you feel so was special. Was that in the mid-90s then? <coughs> it sure was. Yeah. 1990, okay. yeah. Oh, gosh, I'd have to look at the extra date, but a little past the mid-90s. Yeah, case. okay. Yeah. I had a year, just as a little surprise, 95, 96, I had a year where I was hired by Richard Simmons to, oh. des to design his exercise videos. Oh, he was doing heavens. exercise videos and DVDs all along, but he wanted a scientific advisor so he can, you know, go to his next level. Mm -hmm. So for one year, I helped him with all his new programs. Mm -hmm. And he used to, I lived in Albuquerque at the time, he used to fly me out every weekend oh, to Hollywood, California to work with him. Was that like deal a meal and stuff it, it like that? It was deal a meal all over the place. It was unbelievable, yeah. you know. And, 
And see, he was being asked to endorse a whole bunch of products at that time, and so he wanted me to test out all the products so I could give him the thumbs up or thumbs mm -hmm. down on the efficacy of the product, mm -hmm. too. Well, that would have been fun, I suppose. It was fascinating, and you know, the travel, I used to go everywhere with him. Yeah. So I would go to all these events, you know, oh, I went nice. even to the Tonight Show, and I was in the green room with Richard Simmons, so it was really fun. For yeah. heaven's yeah. sakes. Fascinating. You know, I talk about him in one of my classes because he had a major impact oh. on, on the industry. I Tremendous mean, impact yeah. on the industry. And we would go to these, you know, special extravaganzas, fitness shows, people would be lined up two, four hundred people, mm -hmm. you know, three, four blocks long, yeah. just to get an autograph yeah. with him. Yeah. And his big thing at, at these extravaganzas, and he picks the very person. He doesn't just hug him, he picks him up. <laughs> and I always said, you're Richard, you're gonna hurt your back. Yeah. You keep right. doing that, you know. Right. But, yeah, but oh, that would have been fun. He, he, he realized that he impacted a lot of people. Yeah, and, and absolutely. He was grateful of it, too. Absolutely. So you're at Ole Miss. Teaching exercise, exercise science and okay. health promotion using my both. doctorate okay. using both my doctorate was perfect They they wanted it first more so for the health promotion because that's what they wanted to really promote to mm -hmm. get you know Wellness leaders out throughout Mississippi, but then since I could teach exercise physiology, you know They had me teaching exercise perfect. physiology too. Yeah. So it was perfect. Yeah. It was perfect. Yeah, and then how did you get to Albuquerque? Albuquerque, again? UNM. Three years into Ole Miss, my mentor, Vivian Hayward, who you know very well, mm -hmm. wonderful body composition researcher, author in our field, researcher in our field, basically emailed me and said, Len, I'm retiring in a year, oh. so we're going to fill my position. Oh, that was And I'd really like you to take over my reins and oh, take nice. over the leadership of the program. And that probably was about the only place I would have gone at that time. I was yeah. so happy you were, at Ole Miss. Yeah, you liked it there. Ole Miss was great. Small city, so it was mm -hmm. a little bit different. But great, great support t for faculty. And UNM would take me full circle. And I always kind of felt like full circle would be the, the eventual mm -hmm. goal. Mm -hmm. And it was just happening sooner. Mm -hmm. And I applied for the job. And you know, fortunately, I, I got the job. And Vivian mentored me for a year. And then she retired. Oh, that was good. So there was a little I, overlap there. I had a there. mentor for one year. Yeah. You got everything mentored. Yeah, yeah. very nice. Yeah. Very. So in that progression, where did ACSM intersect? Well, ACSM has always been the organization that I've sought for guidance, personal, and for inspiration from my own growth and development. Mm -hmm. And I'll bring up a name you know, Michael Pollack oh, yeah, has yeah. always been my premier, mm -hmm. premier role model. What a neat guy. A and yeah. another one, Ed Halley. He's here yeah. and I tell Absolutely. him and he's very yeah. humble, but Ed Halley has always been one of my premier role models in mm -hmm. the industry. Mm -hmm. Ed, I believe, is so much more what I want to be. He, he's strong science, but great application. Yeah, yeah. Um, Michael Pollack was really a guru to me. I thought he was the best presenter I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. When he presented, he somehow engaged the audience in a way that I would go, if he taught a second class, you know, they had a repeat, which they don't yeah, usually do, yeah. but I would go to it. Right. I would go to ACSM, the first thing I would choose would be Michael Pollack's lectures. Mm -hmm. And then whatever Ed Halley was, I was there. Mm -hmm. yeah, whatever. Was there a uh, one of your professors maybe that that mentioned ACSM to you? Well, along the way, do you remember? Or Vivian, oh, oh yeah, right, right from the get go, Vivian, incredibly strong ACSM. Incredibly right at the strong. master's level, or even when you were an undergrad. At the master's level, you know, I have to be honest with you. Even though Glenn Gazer was very involved in ACSM. Mm -hmm. um, the influence wasn't there. You mm -hmm. know, he really was, he was with George Brooks, they were ACSM yeah, integrated. Yeah. But for us, um, there wasn't really the, the inspiration on, or the, you know how some you know, schools will say, we've got to get you here at this. Yeah, it, I, it was all kind of like self-driven. Yeah. But, but Vivian, the big thing right when we got there was, we want you going to these conferences. We want you And maybe abstracts. regional, uh, maybe Southwest region. Right away. She got us presenting at Southwest ACSM yeah. right away, yeah. immediately, the, from the very first semester. Yeah, we were good, there. good advice. Yeah. 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 So your mentor is everything as far as getting involved with ACSM. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I actually originally got involved with our region. 
which I enjoyed very much, the regional, the regional. Mm -hmm. But my home is really, my love is the ACSM Health and Fitness Professionals because my roots are with the fitness yeah, professionals. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. this conference, the ACSM Health and Fitness Summit, so much is directed towards helping you know, my mm -hmm. early, early, you know, roots. And so I'm really committed to this conference. Yeah, I, I think this is the 15th summit, maybe, uh, close to 14 it. 14 or 15. Yeah. 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 So uh, were you involved early on or more Great recently? Question. or Believe it or not, I came as a delegate. They didn't even know who I was for two or three years just coming. And they didn't even know. Well, maybe they might have known me, you know, mm -hmm. but I was a delegate for two mm -hmm. or three years. I think just because be, it was interesting. It was yeah. interesting. And yeah. I just came just to go to the lectures. I believe I came three times before I even applied or anybody even said it, Aitlin Kravitz or anything. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Now, have you done work with the journal, too, with, with Ed well, as editor or Larry earlier? I'm or on the, ad, the advisory board, so I review for Ed Howley. I have reviewed for uh, Larry Golding. Mm -hmm. Now, one of my goals right now is, you know, I've had several, I, they're all co-authored. So with my undergrad and grad students, we, we co-author an article. Mm -hmm. And right now, every one of my you know, doctoral students, we're co-authoring, submitting. Oh, no, and I have great. to be honest with you, it's peer reviewed. So we've had a few rejections. Yeah. And I tell my students, this is the life. So we're learning it. Yeah, but, this but is, yeah. We're trying to do a lot of submissions. And, and two, you know, I've had quite a few, well, I would say quite a few, but several published in MSSE. Oh, great, yeah. So, and those are all you That's know, the dissertations. The That's the top flight. There. Absolutely, uh -huh. that's the most prestigious. Yeah. yeah. Now you're mentoring these students, and, and and it's amazing though because the level is so high now. As you know, Jack, things you know, change. When, when we they? went there, you know, we didn't even know molecular biology. Right. Now all my students right. are taking all of these, you know, very very in-depth molecular biology classes, and yeah. they know so much, you know, yeah. more in an area we weren't even researching. Right. At our didn't time. even know about it. Didn't really. even know about it. Yeah, that's exciting, but it's the students that really. Uh, have the ability to keep us going. They keep know? us and going. Yeah. That's why teaching is everything. The yeah. students inspire yeah. us. Yeah. Their quest for knowledge is inspiration for I each agree. and every one of us. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So uh, did you uh, keep up any of your interest in gymnastics over those years? Great or? question. I love watching gymnastics. I'm no longer, some of my friends are still involved in coaching and in judging. Mm -hmm. But to me, gymnastics was just a wonderful it wasn't a moment in a life, it was a, a block of life mm -hmm. where I learned so much of what I use now today. Yeah. And, I, and to get that good as a, as a college student, you had to have started young. Too. Started it in seventh grade, yeah. seventh grade. Yeah. You used to spend sometimes five hours a day sure, training. Because sure. you would train in the gym, you would train at home, you'd do your calisthenics, but sometimes five hours a day. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, oh mm -hmm. yeah. Loved it, loved every minute. Loved yeah, it. so you did rings, you did all around. All, so. I did all of them. I was best, yeah. I'm, a tall, I'm too tall now to be a gymnast. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm 5'11", which at that time was even tall. Mm -hmm. At that time when my role model was Dave Thor. What a name, Dave Thor. Yeah. Dave Thor was also, he was a six foot gymnast oh, on wow. the national team. Yeah. And Dave had the incredible body on all the gymnastics. He was one of the last of the tall gymnasts in our field because we started, you know, using biomechanics more and more. Yeah. And biomechanics dictates it's a compact Six body. Six feet won't work. It won't work. <laughs> and, and Dave was my hero because at 5'11", you know, there weren't very many tall gymnasts. It's like Mary Lou Retton, you know. Mary Lou, what, what, what a compact, yeah. pipe-sized individual. Oh, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 But when you love a sport, you don't just leave it, you know. And, and right. I, I told people I, I loved it, so I was going to participate. Mm -hmm. yeah. So... so um, now you're a speaker at the summits and so forth. Are you on the committee too, I'm the planning on committee? The planning committee okay. as well. And Mike was just telling me a little bit about how excited he is and and it looks like you have a really good group there. Mike's that, very motivated. Yeah. He's got a lot of new ideas and as we all know, we must keep growing. Yeah. Ed yeah. has been our leader for the last maybe 3 years. Mm -hmm. Larry Golding was tremendous. You know, mm -hmm. I think he he created, you know, the the ACSM Health and Fitness yeah, Summit or certainly certainly the idea. The idea for sure. Yeah. And yeah. so we're, we're, we're evolving, you know, that part of growth and development of, of the organization and the summit is to evolve. So And how many uh, 
uh, graduate students do you have now? We, you know, at UNM, we have like 30 active graduate students. Because mm -hmm. you know there's what we call the inactive. There's that yeah. all but dissertation. They're, yeah. they're trying to get it still together. Still around. But we, they're still around. But we've got 30 that are taking classes, involved in a lab, involved in research. And for us, that's good for yeah. our program. And, that, and what are you working on now in your personal Research. I've always loved energy expenditure, and I'm about mm -hmm. to do several energy expenditure studies right now. And my real interest at this very moment is that I, I really like weighted vest exercise. Oh. And so I'm going to be working on an elliptical trainer on a cycle, standing cycling. Standing mm -hmm. cycling, you compare it to elliptical trainer with weighted vest. It's a mm -hmm. great workout. It's a new stimulus. Yeah. And instead of going faster and harder, you know, I'm adding weight to the body and looking at, yeah. and I'm going to look at, you know, oxygen consumption, O2 kinetics. Now, would that necessarily increase uh, energy expenditure with the... It, oh, it will. It will. With the weight. To, to what degree, I'm not sure right now, because there's okay. not a lot of good data. There's people that do it, but not a lot of good data with weighted vests. I and see. no one really knows the progression, how effective are... 25 pound weighted vest mm -hmm. versus five pound. Mm -hmm. Is there much difference in mm -hmm. the human, you know, economy and, and efficiency? Oh, that sounds interesting. I think so too. Yeah, I'm very interested, and in, I'm working on what we all know as our IRB Human Research Review Board. Oh, you know, yeah. Permission to move forward with the study. Yeah, yeah. and 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 the, the weighted vest would make it, I think, fairly safe and applicable. Safe. And, and, and uh, my goal down the road, too, is look into special populations, i.e. Oh osteoporosis, yes. Great for idea. bone loading. Yeah. So it could have a real ramification. Slip, put this on, and rather than fooling, you know, trying to balance weights or... Exactly. The, the bone loading population is really the eventual, you know, um, super, super Very study. Very good idea. Yeah. Very good. So you have some doctoral students then too, I assume? Yeah, doctoral. Yeah, I told them, I talked to them before this summer. I said, get ready. We're going to start some new <laughs> research. And they're, they're ready to go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's, they, they just, you know, the, the, the delay of all researchers right now is research review boards. Mm -hmm. there, 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 there are uh, Achilles Hill, as you well know. Yeah, especially using human subjects. Yeah, human subjects are definitely the Achilles Hill for yeah. researchers now for yeah, us yeah. but we just have to just be patient yeah yeah wow okay so anyhow um, I already asked you what I norm normally ask about the summit sort of where we're at and where we're going and you're on the planning committee and and, and all that um, I guess the only question that left I would have is uh, how do you see the the sort of the fitness industry going uh, it seems to me it's People are recognizing its importance now, and it's a growing field. I think there's seems to be jobs out there for for students. Tremendous, and yeah, I, I totally agree, Jack. I think there's going to be tremendous growth in the industry right now because there's more products that are evidence-based products. There's mm -hmm. programs, evidence-based programs, and and we have really a, a great ACSM has great partners out there with these industry-led club and fitness organizations mm -hmm. who really want the credibility of ACSM, the certification of ACSM, mm -hmm. you know, the leadership and research of ACSM. So I, I see a lot of growth and development, but with the science and the application mm -hmm. leading the way. So and, it's, and it could be a perfect win-win situation. Yeah, I, I agree. It, it is a win-win situation. Yeah. I, I agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Well, anyhow, I told you 30 minutes I know. Ago. I'm looking at my watch. <laughs> Can you believe that? I, I, I was you. worried I wouldn't be able to talk, too. I, mean, I, I couldn't stop talking. So yeah, that's, that yeah. was great. Thank that's you fabulous. so much.